G'day, how you going? Ian Harris here, your acrylic guru, aka Ianapolis. Welcome to my video today. I've got my 30 centimetre by 42 centimetre canvas panel there. This is a paper canvas panel. Some of them yeah, can be paper and some of them can be actual canvas on there, okay? This is a paper one. So I'm using a light, tacky mask and tape to border the edge because if I use a strong one on paper, it'll pull it off. And we all have sorts of problems when that stuff happens, all right? Um, now, I'm just going to pull to the side so you can see all the colours going up the screen there like that. And if they're going a bit too fast, just pause it so you can catch up and write them down. And don't forget to share me videos on Facebook and get them out there to everybody so everyone can see what we're all up to, okay? All right. I've got a coffee going here. And we're going to do a... Well, you saw the picture in the opening credits there. So the sort of painting you want to put in a frame, you've done it, and you want to hang it on your wall, and it's a good aspect of a painting. It's got the sky, it's got some green foliage, a bit of water, maybe it's a lake or a river and some foreground. It's just a good structure of a painting and something you can place in your hallway and go, hey, I painted that, hey. And it's a lot of fun as well. So this is what we're going to do. You can do any size canvas you like. So it's up to you if you want to pencil it in or you can just go with the painting and know where you want to go. But because this is a tutorial, I'm going to, I'm going to pencil it in. So I want a bit of the, the upper of the horizon line is your detail of the sky and the ground. And the lower part is if you're going to have water or a field the detail you want that so I'm going to have mine just a bit under half let's say halfway is there so I'm going about here all right so I'm just going to imaginarily bring that along all right I want to start with the sky and maybe the reflection in the water down here so let's prep up our canvas using acrylic paint I'm going to have oh, oh such a hard night that bottle's had isn't it we're going to set up the canvas with my flowing white paint. Flowing white paint is just a soft bodied white paint and some retarder. Retarder is a medium that slows down the drying time of your acrylic paints. Now some people are in isolated areas and they don't have all these products. I have in the past used sealing white paint that you paint your ceilings with in a house for this part here, okay? But of course, if you want to do paintings, go to a craft shop and buy all the proper acrylic paints. Now, we'll get the bit in for the water there. See, this is going to allow everything to blend. And then we'll come up the top and we'll get the sky ready. So we're virtually primering up so the sky can be blended and moved around like an oil painting, okay? Get some more of that in there. I want it nice and thick. Not too gluggy thick, but enough thickness to get your paints to move. All right, so we've got our top and bottom done with Flow White and Retarder. <laughs> Now today I'm going to use for the sky French Ultramarine. I know a lot of people that know me, I use Phalo Blue, but that's the, because it's the only colour I get my hands on. But I've got a little bit of French Ultramarine here and I want to put some retarder with that. Why? Well, this is the background of our sky and that is the sky colour and all these applications need to be blended. So now we've got a bit of retarder in that there like that. And we'll just load up this big two inch brush. Now I want the sky, if anything, darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So I'll start at the top and bring it down. And then we'll put our reflection in it, okay? So let's get this in. Push it into that white paint. Now I've put the brush on this way. And as I'm coming down, I'm going to turn it to get more of a... I don't know why, it's just a habit I bloody do. Okay, there's our lightness at the bottom. Now, see here? 
keep massaging it, play with it. You're an artist. Get involved with your work there and get those strokes nice and long and commit all the way through. Don't sort of, oh, 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 oh. You know, you're an artist. Act like an artist, think like an artist. All right, now we've got that done. We're going to pick up some more and just down the bottom here, we'll get a bit of the watercolour in as well, just like that. Just like that. Now I want to get the top a bit... Oh no, that, that's dark enough. You can go too dark on your skies and your paintings start looking like fifth grade cartoon stuff where you keep them a lot lighter is safer than being darker because they dry darker as well acrylics there look at that see that bit of playing around and you've got a nice now i would like i wouldn't mind a bit more lighter here in the horizon so i'm going to just pick up some of the flow white and blend it back up into the sky like so there we go now I have some quinacridone magenta here and I want to pull that out and then create a bit of purple with my French ultramarine here just like that I better grab a bit of retard already as well because I'm going to need some of this to keep it wet and blendable okay let's get some more of this into there now see there we've got our color but you sort of it's dark let's turn the headlights on i'll grab it a bit of flow white and you can see what color that is all right she's a bit light and purpley let's make it darker so now i've filled up my brush and i've got to start on another pile there we go maybe a little bit more magenta until i get that purpley tone that i'm after now i'm just going to pick it up in the white here like that and there we go that's pretty much what I want for the polluted part of the sky okay all right so we know our horizon lines there just under halfway pick up some of this color and grab yourself a blending brush okay and what we want to do is just quickly get this on across the horizon line like that okay oh it's faded away over there but that doesn't matter we don't want it big thick and heavy and dark if anything with acrylics keep your colors light until you learn how to play with them now grab yourself a blending brush and a rag and we want to blend that into the blue so it wastes away into our beautiful blue there okay this is going to be the um, the polluted I love putting this on my horizon lines now it's a polluted horizon line it just gives it a bit more sense of realism and it just makes your painting look like yeah i like that i like it and it gives you that bullshit effect it's beautiful now it's important when you're doing this blending you've got a rag and you you're wiping the excess off that blending brush now we know i've got going to have water here so we want to sort of bring that into the water area as well this is all the background of our painting and believe me keeping things lighter looks a bit more realistic than when they're dark now we'll get this a bit more up there because this sky is still wet and we want to quickly put some beautiful clouds in there all right so there we go we've got our polluted horizon line it might look a bit it actually it does look dark on my camera there i'm just looking into my monitor but on the painting it's not too bad now because this is paper if i keep smashing and hitting there i'm going to start lifting it you've got a certain window now for the clouds we're going to use the titanium white from a tube it's not that white flowing stuff because that's got no body in it this one has so we're going to make some clouds and we can use some of this as the shadow in the clouds if we like so let's grab ourselves a brush to apply the clouds with i've got a little fan brush here now in the horizon line you pretty much want small clouds in the horizon and bigger as they come to the top of the panel okay where's my horizon line somewhere here so i just want something give it a bit of body don't be scared give it a bit of body okay there's one there i want to quickly do a couple here one there 
Some of these might get covered up with the um, foliage we do, but we're putting them there anyway. Okay, now let's blend that with a smaller blending brush. I have a smaller one here. Now I just want to blend them into the sky there, just like that. Okay. They're very small. See, I've gone and made that mistake of putting them all in the same line. So I'll put one here just to break it up. Now that's got to be the bottom of the horizon line there, that cloud. All right, we've got them in. Now let's put some bigger ones in there. So we'll come over here and maybe put, just stamp it all on the shape you want. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Now grab your other blending brush that we're using on the um, polluted horizon line. And now I'm going to blend this down. And while I blend this, wipe your brush as you go. Oh my God, look at the fluff there. And then we'll add our, tickle the tops a little bit. And we'll add our shadow in there. I've got fluff all in there. Now for the shadow of the clouds, I've just got some toning grey out of a tube. Or you can mix up your own grey to the value you want. I'm using the same brush I used to stamp the cloud on with. Now I just want to give these a little bit of grey in there. Just so they're not a flat white cloud. And I'll blend that grey into that white there slightly. so they don't look too flat and fake you know there we go now we'll do this big one I'll pick up some of that gray and we want the it's just a matter of keeping the bottom there dancing up into it a little bit okay then we grab our blending brush we use for that cloud and we're gonna softly blend this into the white keeping it a bit of a bottom a gray bottom okay you can go all over the place wherever. Now, we're pretty much done. But now we get a bit of white. I'm just going to clean that brush so I can use the same one. Pick up a bit of white. And then I just want to put in the yummy bits. You sort of sink that grey back a bit. Just enough. So you've got some dimension in that cloud and you've got a beautiful acrylic cloud there okay this cloud looks a bit uh, bare bottomed over here so what I'll do I'm going to sink that back with another one in front of it so I've got my fan brush my white paint and I'm just going to put something in front of that like that and just come off the painting okay done Grab your blending brush, wipe it. We're going to blend and soften that into the sky like so, creating our... So we've put that in front of the other cloud, okay? Tickle the tops a little bit. This is acrylic. It's a good quality acrylic. Now we're going to pick up the grey, toning grey that's on the... I've just washed a brush. And we want to stamp that through. So we want it virtually the bottom of the cloud, all the way up. That's it. Now we're going to blend that grey into the white. Softly does it. Give the cloud a bottom. It creates that cloud has now become a cumulus cloud up there. Fluff right up even there. The top can even go up there if you want. It's up to you how technical you make your clouds then like I said we get some more white I'll fix that up there a bit and we put some yumminess over that gray just like that and we blend that back a little bit leaving the sharp bits of white there that's creating all the fluff over the gray I'll fix this up now and we'll just put something on this side to even the painting up 
before we do, I'm just sort of looking at that. The horizon line's a bit... I want to kind of wipe this brush. I'm going to see if this will work. And just dull down some of that. There we go. Now I want to just put a simple cloud over here. So let's just... All over the place. Because I know I'm going to have trees on the edge. So it's another cumulus cloud. Blend him, tickle the tops. Blend the... Give it a bottom. Tickle the tops. A little bit. So we've done that. We're picking up the grey. The toning grey out of the tube. Just to give it its shadow and depth. So it's got the bottom on there. You can practice clouds all just on their own. Okay, but once you master them, they're an easy thing. But if you just ignore the technicality behind it, they be can become the most hardest thing in the world to paint, to at least look realistic anyway, without too much overkill. All right, we've done our cloud and we'll just give it our yumminess. Sitting that, <laughs> that'll do. Oh, that's a bit heavy there. I'll wipe my brush. And there, you've virtually got a dimensional cloud. It's got, it's got everything in it. <laughs> going to get a bit of um, white in this water here just to make up for the cloud reflection and I just want to pull that across see that's still damp there we go it's just giving it those values that we're going to need in the water so we're ready now just to put our trees in front of the lake how are we all doing right I'm going to keep it simple. So we want some trees, some green stuff there. It's not too far away, so it doesn't have to have too much um, pollution in front of it. So we're going to stick with green. So I'm going to have a darker green. I'll use a forest green for that. And I'll use maybe a sap and a yellow green. Yellow green for you beginners is a colour. It's a, it's a real vibrant yellowy green colour, and they call it yellow green. All right? Uh, it's a good colour to have in your arsenal. Uh, you can make it once you learn how to mix colours and stuff like that. Anyway, so we'll get the tree colours on here now, which is our greens. So I always like to make sure I have forest green, sap green and yellow green. Uh, there's me sap green and a forest green. I want to mask up me horizon line from the bottom side. Okay. Now, I've got a very low-tack masking tape, okay? And if it's very tacky, you can put it on stuff, to on some material to get the stickiness off. Now, when we put this on, just sit, that's, get it reasonably straight to your eye, which is roughly there, and that's it. You don't have to press the living buggery out of it, and, you know, it's just going to give you an area where to paint to okay that's it so we can pull that off nice and neatly without ripping our paint off okay now I've got my forest green down here now let's find an appropriate brush to put our I'm just going to use say like this one where are we it's a round brush but I've cut the edge off on an angle now get this a bit watery and wet I'm going to wet the brush and then pull the paint into it this is a very good quality body paint, so I'm not really destroying it with that water because I want to create the top of our trees now. Then we can detail them in. So if anything, I want to sort of come off the... the see, I want to create the top. Now, if you want some air in between them, okay? Now, if, that's, if this cloud is a bit wet, stop and dry it. But I want this to come over and get a lot of air in the edge. And why I put a bit of water in it, it 
transfers off the brush. Look at that. It transfers off the brush and onto your canvas easier. When it's thick and gluggy like this, it's blobby. You don't want dark blobs. So let's create the shape of this and we'll just block it in. So I'm virtually coming here. It's going to be like that. Just down to our horizon line there for now. And then we can stamp all that in. See, I want the edge of it hairy and open. It gives it that sense of realism. Then once we've blocked in all this dark forest green, we'll go and lay in another colour. So I'm going to that tape. Okay. See, watch this. If I've got to pull it off, it's just coming off. It's not ripping the paint off, okay? That's why I said just do it soft. We'll come along. We want some sort of another bush here. You've got to, dis in your mind, you're the artist. In your mind, you're the one that's got to determine that's going to be one bush. That's going to be another one behind this one. You do all that in your head. If you have a reference picture, that's great. Now, I want to keep some of this pollution along here. So we're just going to virtually dance along up and down here get that paint a bit wet so as we can get some of it coming off there you go it's coming off the brush now see so many things to learn about painting they're just simple things and if you don't understand them you get frustrated throw your brushes in the corner and get annoyed and think ah oh, it's a lot of crap but just knowing these simple things help now I want to at least start over here as well come off the painting I want to bring this one virtually there like that something like that and come down here and a bit lower in the middle just so as we're going to see some of that polluted skyline there now why i chose to do it this way it's like for you early beginners we're working with our training wheels on and we're not going to make any mistakes so we've done this we've colored all that in like that with our dark green it's still wet now we can pull this off and we know it's not going to pull the paint off because we did it softly with low tack tape now if that was strong sticky tape I would have pulled the because it's a paper canvas now see here let's because we're gonna have a bit of a bank in this and the so now we want to quickly get this reflection in the water so grab yourself a two inch brush something to pull it down with and just pretty much dab in roughly the area of that like so somewhere about here okay see what we've done now I'm gonna just quickly put it on there like that we've got time to do it come up to our horizon line there okay less is best so don't overdo it this is a fun bit but don't overdo it okay now put that brush down like a gentleman find your horizon line and just carefully pull there we go. I've pulled it. Grab your rag. Wipe the brush. We're working with our training wheels on, don't forget. Pull it down again. Not too heavy, not too light. Work out the pressure you've got to do this. Okay. Now it looks a bit sharp and hard, so I'm going to get this soft brush and just lightly come across that way okay that's beautiful okay I've dried this with the hair dryer because I don't want it to mud up and down here I've got the sap green now I might put it just a little bit of this in there just see what it does because it's a little bit it's 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 a different green to that but it's still on the same darkness so I just want some lighter values through it I'm just putting the slightest bit of flow white in it so you can distinctively see the difference between the forest green and this sap green so I've slowly lightened it now we're going to work from the back forward so we'll leave the lighter bits there and we'll sort of put some bushes in front just like that in the water at the same time and because this um, work I'm going to work this way if anything the sun's in the middle of the sky so it's not left or right so we're going to sort of come over into the water, come over into the water, okay? And you can start to see the different values of our shrubbery there. Of course, this is going to have a 
a bank area here, so we're not worried about a reflection there. So we're putting everything in front, leaving the darks there, okay? Now we'll do this monster here. So we want to put maybe a bit there, a bit there. See, now if this was wet and I didn't dry it, it'll mud up and you'll get frustrated. So you can see the different greens here. Now we want to bring this one maybe in front of there like that, some, something like that. So if anything, we can cheat with this and say, well, the, the sun's coming from anywhere. Okay, I've got to look in my monitor. It helps me like squint my eyes. How's it looking? It's just looking. You want to keep the bottom dark, if anything, because the sun does come from the top. So leaving the middle, we'll like that into the water into the water I just want to get rid of the scratchy marks out of the water there now we've got to come over the top a bit don't forget leave the bottoms dark and leave a few dark bits everywhere you do not want to kill the darks. But if you do, it's not a problem. We always can put the forest green back. But the sharper you can get the edges of this, it starts looking more, oh, wow, I like what I've done there. You get real happy with your work. I'm just using this to scratch that water down a bit. No rule says you've got to stop and pick up another brush. So we're just sort of making our own foliage, but keeping it dark, leaving it dark at the bottom. Put some of this in there. Now our bush is coming alive. Now I've got my yellow green here. This is an Australian yellow green. You could see the difference. And just adding white to this really highlights it you don't want to overdo the white so you can see the difference in the three greens the forest the sap and the yellow now i'm going to clean that brush i used before i put the yellow green on i've gone and dried the painting and i'm mixing a bit of carbon black with that forest green so i want it more black if anything but i don't want it a solid black and roughly where our horizon line is we need some dark aspects coming up into the painting mainly in the horizon line and we need dark pockets just to give it that sense of realism and all the um, yellow green that we're doing here after this is going to sit this down okay so this is keeping the darkness in the bottom there we'll come along little bits in there just to give it that depth wherever you go at the top go down at the bottom okay so you might look at this and think wow that black sort of didn't help but it's once we sit it down with the yellow green now I'm going to dry this again before I put the yellow green on there just softening the edges of some of these hard black bits they look a bit too loud so we'll do that and this is a good freehand painting, no tracing involved, it's just something out of your head. Or you can use the same ideas from a reference picture and put it your way, but using the reference as the subjects. There we go. Just getting rid of some of those dark edges there. Beautiful. The fun you can have with acrylic is fantastic. Now we can go back to the yellow green. This is where you got to think now. Don't just go and do willy-nilly anywhere. Try and imagine, all right? Get artistic again. Try and imagine just the, like, I'm just going to show you here. This is just going to go around the top of that, leaving the darks and into the water there. Pull it down a little bit. See what I've done there. And you want just the littlest, sharpest into the water there. Pull it down a little bit. How's that looking? It's looking all right. I don't want to overdo it in the distance there. Now, I, I could see I've got a, another tree there, and he's going to be made up in the water as well. Pull him down. Okay, 
And like I said, we're going to work this side to the from the middle out. It's a safe way. Pull that down. It's very safe. The tops, mainly the tops, little bits. Just step back, squint your eyes, look at it, and if you think that's it, don't go anymore. See that dark bit there? I want to leave that. I don't want to go and kill that. When you get those right shadows and shadows and tones there, it just makes it look good. Now we've got some light sneaking through this side, so we can put the light there. Okay. It's come through wherever the light's coming from. Now, we want to just... Oh, very soft and sharp we want these colours. But you see what this yellow-green's doing now to the painting? And they're, they're that far away. We're not going to see any detailed... Um, what do you call it? Trunks. So you don't have to go... If it's a close enough tree, you can put some trunks in there. But this is just... Give, now, I want to come over there down leaving the shadows and this is sort of sinking the shadows back and just giving it a bit of a realistic and we'll come out here Ooh, this is going to join up onto the ground eventually under the bank all right look at what you've just done this is where you can add the bullshit effect to it see you've got i've just wiped the brush and i want to sort of soften these now just any bits that are too loud just soften them, but don't over soften them because you can mud that section up. Now we're going to start on the other side. So we'll leave that middle bit. We'll come down here into the water. Blur that up. Just like that. Because this is going to have a um, shore in front of it over there as well. Blend that up. How's that looking over there? All right, I need to sort of come this way. Not too much air. Come over here, pull it down. Some in the blacks, not too much. Now I want to get just a little bit here. Oh, see, that's too hard. I should have went a bit softer there. Just like that in the middle. And I want to keep the dark there and bring this like it's another bush in front of that. Just like that. And you can see the dark bits will sort of come over them and leave them there. And we'll put some of this colour in there. Pull it down. Pull it down. It's simple, slow and steady winning the race with your painting this. We'll get that there. We'll get some of this just over the dark. See the dark there? Sitting it dark down. You don't want too many lights, meeting lights, and so we'll get these colours in there, all up there, pull them down, pull them down. See, there's no rule to say when you should and shouldn't pull it down. Uh, let me have a look now. I want to dribble some of this into the dark, just so it'll look a bit... There, there we go. It's sunk it back. Bring some more down into the dark. Let's come around here, say. Into the dark. Not too much. That way it's not an even pattern. It looks nature. I could probably do a bit here. That's pretty much it. You can muck around with that until the cows come home. But that's all we need to do for our foliage. All right, how are you going? You're all caught up? We're getting there. Now we're just going to put a, f a, f um, a distant bank over there to sink that back into the water. And then we'll bring a, a bit of a shoreline over here. So I want to... Where's a brush? I just want to use a flat brush for this because I feel I've got a bit of control to get something across the horizon line like that. And I can bring it forward as well. So we're going to probably have... Um, a distant bank over there and then this will come down over it and then we'll bring the shore here on an angle all right uh, we're going to use why change the colors we've already got the colors there 
let's use them. So we're going to use the yellow green and the middle colour, the sap green, and we'll just use those to get our colours in here, all right? We don't have to go and find some magical, wonderful, weird and different colour that's not even on there. We've got them right here. Use what we've got. So what's my... We'll mix up the yellow green and the sap green just to get it a bit more and some of the... Well, actually, I'll just keep mixing that sap green with a bit more of the flow white. All right. So get your sap green and mix up some more flow white with it, just so as we're getting a lighter value of the sap green. And then we'll, we'll paint our shore in, so probably from about here. Now, all right, the, I'm, I'm teaching you beginners, so let's keep our training wheels on. I'm going to grab that low-tack paint tape, all right, and I'm just going to put it to my horizon line, which is there. And that's it. I've just tapped it on. And probably from not quite the edge, I want to go maybe about here and just make a bit of a, a bank over there. Just like that. Come here. I want it roughly there there I'm just making it up as I go there we go now I'm going to wipe that brush and get some of the darker color that I mixed up with the sap with the forest green and the black and I just want to carefully in here put some darkness into that bank we'll give it a quick dry because it's very wet and then we're going to Let's get some more darkness into this bank. Just so as we can just stamp it on. Find your way. Stamp it on. Because this is going to allow the depth for that bank as well, believe it or not. And you'll see what I mean. So we're dancing it on just here and there. See how it mudded up there? So I wouldn't expect a, a senior beginner to try and do it wet on wet. That's why I say dry it. Watch my videos all the way through so you don't get tripped up. Okay, so now we've got that. You can see what that's done. Let's take that tape off nice and carefully. Because I put it on soft, it's not ripping up my painting. See that? And we've got a shore over there. Now we're back down here. Let's grab our yellow green. Let's grab a little bit of white, not too much. And let's see what the white does, if it's going to give me the value. See the yellow come through on that? So let's lightly get that to a different value and from the distance we just want to sort of or maybe this is a, just a bit too I want to let me just see in the monitor after I do this that's all right I don't want to overdo it but I want this some of it just leaking over that black maybe get where it meets the top of that field really does it so we'll start from the the back oh see that's a big blob you don't want big ones like that you want them nice and little just take your time there's no rush to do any sort of painting okay and then we can leak some of that over the the black bank the shadow of the black bank just take your time don't think you've got to do it as quick as me all right, there's our bank. Okay, we got that done. Now we just need the smallest of white with a bit of water in there on that. I'm using that chiseled flathead brush again because I can get more control over that with a knife. And where the white is, no, where the black is, I just want to gently... Oh, that's even too thick. Just gently... Sit that down. Okay. How's that looking? That's all right. I've got it in too many little dots. I want to sort of lengthen it up a bit more. Just so it's not. And that's just the water bouncing against the bank over there in the distance. Now see the colour of the sky? Down here it's what we use. So what we're going to do, we've still got that colour. Okay. We'll get a bit more of the... French ultramarine so we can lighten that up because we want a very pale white here's some here 
very pale white there we go this is what makes the magic in the water i want to get it nice and flat chiseled it flat so it's like a knife and i want to put some of this very thinly this is the glare in the water but we're using that color okay they they are a bit fat for me don't want them that fat let's get some over here see they they stand out in the water but they're not pure white and the skinnier you can get these things and more natural looking we'll have a glimmer of it here it's just better than white okay and it just gives the water a bit more of a glassy look now i want to fix this up see that it's a bit like oh my god so let's add some bullshit to that and go bullshit is that how you fix it and you can go yep so you want to there you go get in the mood and uh, in the motion and get it going there's no right way or wrong way to hold a brush And this color is going to show on the light and darker colors of the water as well, which is important. Okay, I've just washed the brush. It's damp. I've dabbed it dry. It's damp. I'm just going to hopefully not wreck this. I'll just start here. Is it going to move that? No, nah, it's staying wet. All right. I just don't like some of those. See, now this is bringing up another wash, which I'm trying to get without killing all those other whites but if you can master a knife and get them nice see we're trying to create the dullest wash so it creates a surface on our water so we've got some glassy water anyway now i've got that color that we mixed and now i've made a darker tone just a darker tone and then we carefully put a lot of these next to those white ones that or the paler white blue ones that we did on there and this is giving you the reflection of all the sky colors with the light hitting it and it just gives it that more of a real aspect and like I've said before this is probably just giving it that bullshit effect again see how these are white the um, having these next to them is just giving it that more realistic look I want to get maybe a bit of a ripple out here somewhere just to break that up and sink that reflection down I think for this bank I'll just use raw sienna raw sienna dark and I've got a bit of white there and some van dyke brown to give it some highlight and some depth shadows in there okay so we'll just pick this up onto the brush there and we're virtually gonna we want to scissor that through just like that and don't forget to think like an artist you don't just want it one beautiful straight line you want to sort of come hang on let's get this over this is going to be the underpainting all right so you want to sort of come there you can come in a bit there come out bring a bring a bit more of a ledge out into the water here and then bring that off to the painting like that all right then we'll get it all blocked in that's it now that can be dried ready for the shadows and highlights okay we've got that laid on there now we want to bring this on top of that we don't want it all just looking a bit weird okay so we're going to have some shorter stuff in front with the shadow of this so I'm going to pick up my Van Dyke Brown I'll get the brush a bit damp and the Van Dyke Brown is the darker color and roughly where I want that to finish I'm going to just stamp in some shadow here okay I want it to roughly come about here like this okay that'll be my shadow for the Now we've got to dry that as well. I could probably put some of this through 
through here as well just giving it some darker values here and there okay what have we got left on the palette here we've got some of the forest green so i'll get some of that onto the brush and we virtually want to come in front of this like that in front deliberately in front of that tree and then turn your brush upside down and that's our shadow there now pick up your hair dryer and dry that now we'll just highlight that there's our yellow green and we put a bit of white in it so let's just grab a bit of yellow and see what that does this will make it a different looking greeny yellowy something the bees will be attracted to it's a bit different give this some highlights so i want to come out into the water here very very carefully i want to dry that brush and do it again it's i've got too much froth in the paint and we'll get some now we're putting this right in front of that so we going over the top there like that it's distinctively putting it in front there okay where are we we've got all the darker values there to create give it some sort of strawy look down here hopefully if that's working and we want a little bit in here yeah just something like that into there now we want to bring the darker colors in here with our flathead brush we want to pull some shadows now so let's just carefully get some of this into there we can bring this raw sienna dark back over it to soften these in but at the moment we want these all in the right level we don't want them going up and down and you know there's all bits everywhere let's get it a bit more drier paint instead of it being so wet get some what I'm going to do is this like I said our training wheels I've got to keep thinking we've got training wheels here so I want to get the the shadow from here a bit more dark there we're dabbing it on don't worry about this it looks a bit like snot at the moment but watch what we do because we've got our training wheels on we're just going to quickly wash and wipe that brush grab the color we used here which was the raw sienna dark I don't know why they call it dark because it's light but that's the color of it and we can bring this back just like so all right like that stop doing what you're doing there wipe that brush just get everything off it and merge those colors together like you're blending tones in a in portrait or something get some highlights on there swap it over with a dry brush and merge them into the bank there that'll blend more smoothly yeah that's what i want just some highlights over there i've grabbed this dark van dyke brown with a little bit of black now where that's on the water we need some shadow there okay just coming around something where we can hit the water against it and it'll it'll be noticeable there and i've got the white and we'll just carefully sink that back into the water so it doesn't look like it's floating And over here on this darker piece okay I think we'll just put an autograph on this and then we can frame it and see how she looks so we'll put my name over here just a lighter color of the brown there all the way down there and Steve's footprint okay put our frame on there <clears throat> there
There we go. That ain't too shabby, is it? We've just got a beautiful coloured sky with some clouds, a bit of pollution in the background. We've got a nice, simple, effective horizon line coloured shrubbery, some water with reflective surface and our foreground. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. It was a good easy one for you beginners out there and you advanced beginners you can tweak it up as well and go that step forward just because it's a beginner's painting doesn't mean you can't do it you can always tweak it up a bit all right if you like what we've done today don't forget to tell your friends but if you don't like it you tell everybody all right all the best goodbye good luck and good on you